session, as we journey up the mountain together to reach the summit, will be a discussion around best practices. Um, we're going to have uh, two chapter leaders and then a society leader come up and talk about best practices. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Ernst Bauer from San Francisco. Ernst um, is formerly the San Francisco chapter leader, is now led by Billy Ruck, and Ernst is going to be talking about a signature program that they did and how they kind of had to um, do some extra effort this year to revitalize that program. So please join me in welcoming Ernst Bauer. Hey, thanks a lot, Tom. Great to be here. It's a from San Francisco. Always fun to be back in Fayetteville, especially during game, time, game day in, uh, in, the, in the Ozarks. But a little history. Um, 1991, um, me and a small group of uh, alumni in San Francisco got together and decided to start a chapter. And how did we go about doing that? Well, we worked with the, the new chapter leadership here, um, the association here with Mike Sensko and his new team, and they gave us a list, and we just started making phone calls and started generating some interest. Had our first event using mailings, and had a huge event at the Fairmont Hotel. If you guys know San Francisco, it's a grand dame on a top of Knob Hill, and we had a few people that showed up, and we had no idea what to expect. I think their people were curious, and um, they were craving to reach out to fellow, fellow Southerners. Uh, <laughs> it's true, out in, the, out in kind of the out, outer hinterlands, and um, they were just really had a great time. We had Mike Francisco come out, and we had some, um, you know, Mike Anderson did a video brief and during the time that Arkansas basketball was really doing well, and it was a fun time, and then. Uh, we made some friends with Jackie and Michael Martini, the great the, the wine family, the Louis Martini wine family. And they said, you know what, come out to our private estate. I said, oh, okay, let's do that. So <laughs> next thing you know, we have a few small events, and they provided all the wine, world-class wine. Next thing you know, we started saying, well, let's do a fundraiser for our scholarship chapter, I mean, for our scholarship for the chapter. And next thing you know, we're raising $3,000, $5,000, $10,000, to, and now we are up to a hundred and sixty thousand dollar endowment, and that provides five thousand. <laughs> so what we've done, we negotiated with the university. We got a, we have an out-of-state waiver, and um, and uh, for our scholarship recipients, and then five thousand per year for four years. So that's close to like a forty thousand dollar package for these students that come from Northern California, and they've been. They've gone on to do great things in business and academia. They're top students. We're very proud of that. We probably have you know, cultural experience for them and for the universities and the of students here. Um, I think it's been a great service for the university, so we're very proud of that. So we had this event that got bigger and bigger and bigger. Next thing you know, we had you know, Jeff Long coming out of the prior plane. We had the president and the board trustee director coming out. And we had deans and, and we had parties the night before. And, um, and Mont Monterosa was one of the great vineyards of all of California, so everybody wants to come out. And so these events became big and, and grand and uh, great fundraisers. Alas, Michael and, uh, Martini, who eventually sold the Gallo, the families came together to, to produce the largest wine uh, producer in the world, um, retired. So we had to, you know, change things a little bit. We had, we wanted to scale back the event a little bit because we had new leadership coming in, we wanted to train young leadership, always try to step away, bring in young leaders to kind of take over the event. And so, sure enough, um, last year we wanted to have a new venue, scale it back a little bit, and our new president had a baby, so we were, you know, had some challenges, and um, next thing you know, we were getting a little bit behind schedule, but we reached out to Tom Ellis and his team, and I think the key was work with them, very closely to get the marketing materials out. You know, what we did uh, with Tom was that right here, we let, we let them do the set the dates and provide all the, uh, the marketing material up front. Uh, you know, they have a, uh, the event recognition webpage, uh, the registration email blast uh, with all the headers and the marketing support. Uh, we had social media graphics and we had our Facebook ready to go. But, you know, things were not jiving because it was a whole new venue, a whole new situation. And we were just thinking, you know, wow, what should we do? So we all went back to the old school days of um, not depending on the email, not depending on social media, but let's, let's divide up lists, phone call, phone uh, numbers, 
to about 10 of us, and we each uh, called out to our friends and contacts. Then we also had uh, a few friends had their own social media uh, sphere, uh, use Pinterest and those type of tools to reach out uh, through their own personal contact list. Next thing you know, we started getting some uh, traction and things started building and we were back up to about 75 folks for, for our last event last year when things were looking a little bit grim for a while. So I guess the moral of the tale is don't depend on social media and emails and don't depend on the alumni association for the ground game. Depend on them for the, you know, the air cover with uh, you know, the email blasts and the, and, the, and the marketing support. But it comes down to you as a chapter leader and your team that you build if you want to have a successful event. I mean, that's the key. Um, you know, if it was easy, anybody could do it. And it takes a little bit of effort, but you know, once you have a successful event, it's a high. I mean, everybody loves it. And uh, you start building the community. And then the next event gets a little bit easier. And the next event gets a little bit easier, and you, you leverage your new friends contacts and you have your phone list going, you have your strategy on the ground going, always working in conjunction with the Alumni Association here. Tom Ellis and his team are, are, are stellar. Um, you know, in the early days we had our own email list, we had our own um, checking account. We did everything our, ourselves and I think it's, it's just gotten too big. So we kind of put all that in-house We'll let the Alumni Association take over those, those uh, key functions. That allows us to kind of focus in on building the community out in our uh, region. So um, I think right here is, is the key here is just, you know, grab the air cover with Tom and his team, and then, you know, on the ground, your work that you have to do, phone calls, text messages to your key opinion leaders and, and folks that uh, have their you know, spheres of influence and, uh, you know, networking, you know, having coffee with your key people that, you know, rally them to the cause. And then, of course, uh, you know, your uh, personal social media push is always key. So, um, uh, you know, it's, we've always done pre-events, too, because we're, you know, out in the Bay Area when we bring in chapter leaders. I mean, I'm sorry, university leaders come out. We make sure we always have a pre-event Friday night. Then we have our main event um, the next day on, on that Saturday. As you can see, we kind of kept the wine theme because in California, you know, that works well, right? It's a natural. But uh, uh, there's so many things you can do. Um, I have to say, the relationship that we built with the Martinis uh, led to, after the Gallo purchase, that led to a million dollar gift to the university. It also led to a partnership with Gallo Corporate to send Walton College graduate, marketing graduates to um, get jobs at a school in California. So, you know, what, the, what our chapters do throughout the country makes a big, big difference, not only in friend raising, but fundraising, and also just being key ambassadors for the University of Arkansas. But you can't do it without the Alumni Association. You, you can't go it alone. You have to let them do the, the groundwork, and then you just come in with your team, and it's all about team building to uh, you know make that ground game work and have a successful event. Any questions? So where did, where did you go first? What's the, what's the new? Yeah, the new venue. Uh, we Tom Andrew Butts, who's the, arch, the architect in the East Bay, we had this kind of cool um, wine consortium of about five different small production wineries come together in this little location. So they were co uh, showcasing their own wines. And then it's kind of right by the docks and the water um, uh, on the east side of the bay. And you had all these old ships, that uh, livery ships. So we had towards the livery ships after that. So it's kind of a historical old dock area with this wine consortium. So it's kind of cool. And uh, you know, it was kind of hard to find, but it was really cool when you got there. And so we didn't lose that cat shape we had with the old Monteroso um, martini uh, estate. You know, it's hard to top, right? So that's always a scare. I mean, how do you top that? Uh, but there's a pretty <coughs> ways that you, you can uh, you know, bring the bear to come up with some new ideas always. Um, you never know what could happen. Also, too, I'll tell you one story. We had a uh, <laughs> applied materials and an executive that was on one of the and uh, he says, all right, so let's go to Fable sometime. All right, let's go together. And so 
says, well, let's take the private jet. All right. So we, so three of us <laughs> took the private jet from Applied Materials, flew into Fayetteville, did a tour with the Houston Engineering grad, and uh, we took uh, Dean Schmidt at the time, the engineering dean, on a private jet back to the Bay Area, where he gave a nice campus uh, speech to the Applied Materials campus with, with a lot of Arkansas engineering grads there. So you never know, when you build a community, you never know what opportunities come your way. I mean, who saw Michael Martini coming in and Jackie Martini? Jackie's the, the alumni, alumnus who married into the Martini wine family. And who, who saw that coming? Who saw the Gallo relationship develop? Nobody could see that. Nobody saw the million dollar gift that was coming. Nobody saw the opportunity to fundraise to, to generate $160,000 uh, endowment for scholarships for California students. You don't know, you just have a vision. I think when I when we do events in, in, in San Francisco, I always you know, say it should be always Stanford-esque. I mean, it's top notch. Everything you do is best in class. That's the culture that we established. And so when we were struggling a little bit on this transition with all new leadership teams coming in, um, we knew that we wanted to keep that cash out. And there's nothing that we wouldn't do to lose that. And so it, that gave us the, the uh, impetus to go out, you know, make that extra effort to make those texts, not rely on the email blast, but make those phone calls, and to uh, put together a ground game and uh, keep that level of excellence that we, you know, have come to be proud of. Yeah, and then we have uh, <laughs> a Providence College graduate, uh, Scott Tastian. He's been, you'll stand up and say hi. Um, he is, uh, for, for many years, we, on these events, at the one event at, with the Martini event, we had crews, of work crews, about 12 to 15 people, which we had to bring in. And Scott was uh, kind of the leader of that. He became an alumni association member. And uh, he knows from Massachusetts. He's never been to the South before, so I thought I'd bring him down. He's looking at the MBA program at the Walton College. So, Kind of cool, and also just to let you guys know, you don't have to be uh, an Arkansas native, you don't have to be an Arkansas graduate to be a member of the Arkansas Alumni Association. And we've had three or four guys from California. One was a UCLA grad, who was our game watch coordinator, and, uh, and a good one, and uh, became an Arkansas Alumni Association member for many, many years. Still is a life member. Um, so we, you know, if you have a good team and produce a great spirit. Around your chapter, that attracts other people from around the country, so and they can join the alumni association. So, uh, any other so, uh, questions? Scholarship? Or, yes, ma'am. So, Molly? as long as I've known you, you've been this great advocate for all things the Thank you for that. Going back to this morning's conversation about the why. Why? What is your why? Yeah, I mean, the why for me is my, my my parents came to Cross in Arkansas from the West Coast many, many years ago to build an industry for Georgia Pacific. It was a, it was a startup operation. And they gave back to the state, and that that you know that lesson was with me always. And even though life took me to the West Coast, I always wanted to give back and. I wanted to um, share the Southern experience to others from the West Coast and bring kind of a cultural um, togetherness there. Um, that's, that was the why, that was what drove me as a volunteer. That was my kind of my mission, uh, is to expose people to Arkansas and, and from, from the West Coast and, and also to build a community on the West Coast because people crave you know, that southern hospitality, that southern specialness. They don't get out there. I mean, they make a good living. We have a very affluent alumni base out there. But um, they, they kind of crave that shared experience of being in our hands. So that was, you know, two whys there. One, to give back to university. Um, advocate being an ambassador for the state of Arkansas because it doesn't always have a great image when you get to the West Coast. And it's a problem. It's an issue. And it's something we have to address. And uh, if we can show other people you know, our pride and our love for the state, I think people appreciate that and they have a different view of Arkansas by doing that. So that's my why, I think. 
And uh, I have to say, I mean, the Alumni Association here, if you look at other alumni associations, I think um, the U of A has done a great job over the years. And I think Mike Sesco did a great job of um, setting the groundwork, you know, that brand and brand has done a great job of really carrying on that great tradition. And you guys should be proud to have this kind of support. And, you know, there's no, there's no way we could have done what we did out in California without, you know, the Alumni Association staff right here, the scholarship person, mm -hmm. Know, or the chapter uh, outreach people, uh, the marketing folks, the, the leadership here has been outstanding. So we appreciate you guys. <laughs>